Thank you, Jesus. Oh, good morning. Blow the trumpet in Zion, Zion. Hallelujah. Lift your voice on the holy mountain. What a glorious day it is to be with you, and what a segue coming out of Sunday morning into this morning's edition of We're Burning Daylight. Looking forward today to not just reading God's Word, but experiencing God's Word with you. Are you ready for this week? I pray that you are. Be available, be willing, and just be sensitive to the voice of God. Let us begin in Psalm 107. It says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom He has redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the lands from the east and from the west from the north and from the south. Some wander in desert waste, finding no way to a city to dwell in. Hungry and thirsty, their soul fainteth within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. He delivered them in their stress. He led them by a straight way till they reached a city to dwell in. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of man. He satisfies the longing soul, and the hungry soul he fills with good things. Some sat in darkness and in shadow of death, prisoners in affliction and in irons. For they had rebelled against the words of the Lord and spurned the counsel of the Most High. So he bowed their hearts down with hard labor. They fell down with none to help. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death, and burst their bonds apart. For his one, uh, Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of man. For he shatters the doors of the bronze, and cuts in two the bars of iron. Some were fools through their sinful ways and because of their iniquity suffer affliction. He loathed any kind of food and they drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he delivered them from their distress. And he sent out his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of man. And let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and tell of the deeds in songs of joy. Some went down to the sea in ships doing business on the great waters, and they saw the deeds of the Lord, His wondrous works in the deep. For He commanded and raised the stormy wind, which lifted up the waves in the sea. And they mounted up into heaven and went down to the depths. Their courage melted away in their evil plight. They reeled and staggered like drunken men. And we're at their wits' end. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. And he made the storm to steal, and the waves of the sea were hushed. They were glad that the waters were quiet, and he brought them to their desired heaven. Haven, let them thank the Lord for his steadfast love, for his wondrous works to the children of man. Let them extol him in congregation of people and praise him in the assembly of elders. He turns rivers into a desert, springs of water into a thirsty ground, a fruitful land into a salty waste because of the evil of the inhabitants. He turns the desert into pools of water and parts land into springs of water. And there he lets the hungry dwell, and they establish a city to live in, and sow fields, and plant vineyards, and get a fruitful yield. By his blessings they multiply greatly, and he does not let their stock, livestock diminish. Amen. When they are diminished and brought low, though oppression through oppression and evil and sorrow, he pours contempt on princes and make them wander in trackless waste. And he raises up the needy out of affliction and makes their families like flocks. And the upright see it and are glad, and all wickedness shuts its mouth. Whosoever is wise, let him attend to these things, and let them consider the steadfast love of the Lord. Amen. Move over into Micah chapter 5 and say, hang on one moment here. Hmm. 
That's so good. That's so good. Now muster your troops, O daughter of troops. Siege is laid against us and with a rod like strike the judge of Israel on the cheek. But you, O Bethlehem, Ephrath, who are too little to among the clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who will be, is to be ruler in Israel, whose coming forth is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give up until the time and when she who is in labor has given birth, then the rest of his brothers shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord the, of God. And, then shall and they shall dwell secure, for he shall be great and the ends of the earth, and he shall be their peace. When the Assyrian come into our land and treads in our palaces, then we will raise up against him seven shepherds, eight princes of men, and they shall shepherd the land of Assyria with sword, and the land of Nimrod at its entrance. And he shall deliver us from the Assyrian when he comes into our land and treads within our border. Then the remnant of Jacob shall be in the midst of my peoples like dew from the Lord, like showers on the grass which shall lay not for a man. And the remnant of Jacob shall be among the nations in the midst of many people, like a lion among the beasts of the forest, like a young lion among the flocks of sheep, which when it goes through treads down and tears in pieces, and there is none to deliver. Your hands shall be lifted up over your adversaries, and all your enemies shall be cut off. And in that day, declares the Lord, I will cut off your horses from among you and will destroy your chariots and will cut off the cities of your land and throw down all your strongholds. And I will cut off your sorceries from your hand and you shall have no more tellers of fortune. And I will cut off your carved images and your pillars from among you and you shall bow down no more to the work of your hands. And I will root out your Asherah image from among you and destroy your cities. And in anger and wrath, I will execute vengeance on the nations that did not obey. Let's take one more portion of reading and let's pick this up in uh, John, the gospel of John chapter 11, talking about the death of Lazarus. Together we read, now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and his sister Martha, it was Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair and whose brother Lazarus was ill. So the sister sent to him saying, Lord, in whom we love is ill. And when Jesus heard it, he said, the illness does not lead to death for it is the glory of God so that the son of man may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister Lazarus, and sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he, which he was. Then after he said to his disciples, "Let us go to Judea again," the disciples said to him, "Rabbi, the Jews were just now seeking to stone you, and, are, and you're going there again." Jesus answered. Are there now 12 hours in a day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of the world. But if anyone walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. After saying these things, he said to them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I will go to awaken him. And the disciples said, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will recover. Now Jesus had spoken of his death, but they thought that he meant that he was taking rest and sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died. And for your sake, I'm glad that I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. So Thomas called the twin, said to the fellow disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. We want to look in today's reading in our devotion, the power of thanks. And together we read, the psalmist pleaded as we read, Oh, that man would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness. Verse 8 of chapter 107. As, as with many of God's instruction, giving thanks pleases him while it also satisfies us. A beautiful mystery in our faith is that the... Fulfillment and satisfaction are directly tied to the word obedience. The more we worship and give thanks, the more God satisfies our souls. 
Giving thanks may please the receiver, but it also satisfies the giver. It is important for us to learn the discipline of thanksgiving. We thank God in pleasant situations, and we thank Him in adverse situations. Taking three points today. One, thanks for being hungry, thanks for being little, and thanks for being sick. Let's take the first, thanks for being hungry. It is the gift of God to experience hunger. Fasting reminds us that only Jesus can satisfy. Daily bread for our bodies remind us that, the, that only the bread of heaven can feed us till we want no more. Psalm 107.9 In life, we often find that good things have lost their luster and pleasure no longer allure. This is the gift of God, a message we should receive with thanks. Dissatisfaction is an appeal from heaven's throne for us to turn to the only one who, we can, tr who can truly satisfy. Number two, thanks for being little. Micah prophesied that through Beth Bethlehem, though they were little, yet out of you shall come forth to me the one to be ruler in Israel. Micah 5.2 we should give thanks for being insignificant and limited because God delights to use the weak things of the world to shame the wise. Being little positions us for His greatness. When we are little in our own eyes, mighty God comes forth to rule. Hear that. He emerges from our weakness and our limitations. He emerges from our weakness and our limitations. And lastly, but surely not least, thanks for being sick. Jesus reminded his disciples that the terminal illness of the beloved friend with not unto death, but for the glory of God, John eleven four. Some sickness is prolonged so that Jesus might receive greater joy. Most sickness happens not as a result of sin, but because God wants to do something in the life of the infirm and in the lives of those around the, that person. Hear this word this morning. When we approach sickness with a genuine thanks... It startles both the evil principalities who perversely enjoy suffering and the uncovered, un, unconverted who fear it. Oh man, hallelujah, this is good stuff. Thanksgiving is one of the most underused of Christian weapons. We are moderately obedient to thank God for pleasant things, but woefully silent when we have the opportunity to thank Him for hunger, smallness, and sickness. There is much to be gained for our souls and one for kingdom when we learn to give thanks in all things. This is the will of God in Christ Jesus for us. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 I come this morning and give thanks for the wondrous things of the Lord Jesus, those which are pleasant and those which are not. And I'm praying that today that each of us approach the things that are coming into our world and that are surrounding us, every circumstance, situation, every trial, every, every moment, whether we look at it and say, thank you, Lord Jesus, for that blessing, or Lord God, thank you for that, that affliction. Thank you for that hurt, that pain. I know that this is challenging for each of us to consider this, but in it we bring a, we bring a blessing, a praise to the Lord that is beyond imaginable to the enemy. And we silence the enemy with our thanksgiving. Thank him today, for the Lord God is good. This is Pastor Bobby. Well, it's gonna be a great week as we're burning daylight. Let us do the things of the Lord with, with, with energy, with a passion, with zeal in everything that is said and done in our lives. Till tomorrow, Lord bless you.